Hello friends, welcome back to another tutorial. Um, today I'm going to be talking about or attempt to talk about the MLF syndrome and the pathways that an MLF syndrome patient um, goes through and I'm going to be talking about exactly how the pathology happens going through each and every step of the pathway. So I would recommend that you grab a pen and paper and kind of work with me um, in this process. Okay, so one thing I would like to mention is that in neuro, one of the most important things is sides. If it's the left side or the right side, the lesion on the left side, and the effect on the right side, all those things is very, very important. So you cannot ignore that. Um, but for the sake of simplicity, I made this the left eye, made this the right eye, and when we're looking at it, when we're looking at a patient, this one should be the right eye, and this one should be the left eye, because when we look at a patient, this is always the right eye. But for the sake of simplicity, I kept the left eye in the same plane as the left eye of, of the eye that has a pathology. So let's say in this case, um, the problem is in the left MLF. Okay. We have already decided from the beginning the problem is in the left MLF. So let's work accordingly. Alright, so let's orient ourselves. This is the left eye. This is the left cranial nerve 3. This is the right cranial nerve 3, the right eye. This is the medial rectus of the left eye. This is the medial rectus of right eye, lateral rectus of left eye, lateral rectus of right eye, cranial nerve nucleus 6 of the left eye, cranial nerve nucleus 6 of the right eye. This is the left eye when we look at the patient. This is the right eye when we look at the patient. All right, now. So before we talk about the pathology, let's look at what happens in a normal eye. Okay, so when we want, when our, um, let's say, when our cranial nerve 6 fires up, this is the pathway this follows. Okay, so our cranial nerve 6 is fired up, so this will send an impulse to the left rectus of the left eye to move in that direction okay but at the same time the cranial nerve 6 is also going to send a signal to the cranial nerve 3 of the right eye to move the medial rectus or to contract the medial rectus so the right eye moves medially in order to both of the eyes look in the left direction okay so I will go over that one more time when the cranial nerve 6 of the left eye is fired up it's going to send an impulse to the left rectus so that the left eye can move towards the left side by the action of the left rectus contraction okay we're moving to the we're looking at the left side now at the same time there is a nerve passing from the cranial nerve 6 to the cranial nerve 3 which will send impulse from the cranial nerve 6 to the 3 to contract the medial rectus so the medial the right eye can contract and move its move its eye towards the medial side in order to have an overall effect of looking onto the left now this one the nerve that passes between the 6 and the 3, which passes from 6 to the 3, this particular pathway, not 3 to the 6, from 6 to 3, this is called the right MLF. Okay? Why am I emphasizing so much on it? Because the right or the left makes a huge difference. Because it's going to the right eye, from 6 this one is called the right MLF so pretty much this is what's going to look like okay this is called 
the right MLF syndrome, the right MLF. But we want to talk about the left side, okay? So I just wanted to show it as an example. I want to talk about what happens if there is left MLF syndrome. Okay, I'll leave this diagram here and I will draw with a different color. Okay, so I made some modifications. So let's say we are trying to look to the right. So this is the direction of the arrow where we want to look towards. We want both the eyes to be looking towards the right side. In that case, let's say our cranial nerve 6 of the right eye is fired up because for, for the right eye to look towards the right side, the lateral rectus has to contract. So this has sent a signal to the lateral rectus to contract to the right side. But at the same time, from cranial nerve 6, there is the MLF going to the cranial nerve 3. Okay, And this, going from the 6 to the 3, would be the left MLF syndrome. Okay, left, because it's going from 6 to 3. So this is the left MLF syndrome, or the left... MLF that is being um, damaged. So this signal, if it could, is going to go through cranial, cranial nerve 3 and from cranial nerve 3 it's going to go to the medial rectus of the left eye. Alright, so we can see that the right eye would have no problem looking towards the right, but the left eye is not going to get the signal that should be coming from 6 to 3 through the MLF because the MLF has the transaction or it's damaged and for this damage the impulse is not going to go to the left eye. So what are we going to see when we look at the patient? We, what's, first let's, let's talk about what we're going to see on the left eye. So since the impulse is not even reaching the left eye due to the transection of the right MLF, the left eye is just going to sit here. Okay? The 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 eye is not even going to move. It's just going to sit here like this. But the right eye, that's the one where we are getting the impulse from the left eye. So this is this is a combination effect. So due to the lack of coordination between the left and the right eye, we are going to see nystagmus with the right eye. Okay, The right eye won't be able to decide, oh, what am I going to do? Am I going to look to the right, look to the left? Because the two cranial nuclei are not working together. Does that make any sense? I hope it does. All right, so let's go over it from the top. This is our left eye, this is our right eye, this is our medial rectus, lateral rectus. In an attempt to look to the right, the cranial nerve 6 of the right eye is going to be fired up, which, which is going to send an impulse to the left lateral rectus, contracting the muscle to look in that direction. From the cranial nerve 6, it's going to send MLF, MLF goes, runs the right MLF, sorry, the left MLF moves from the right cranial nerve 6 to the left cranial nerve 6. This is the left MLF because this is going to the cranial nerve 3 of the left side and that there is going to be our problem. So from cranial nerve 3 again, the cranial nerve nucleus 3, the cranial nerve 3 is passing from the nucleus to the medial rectus, which is not going to be stimulated because of the transaction of the left MLF. As a result, the left eye is going to look the way it is. It's just not even going to show any indication of moving to the right side. But the right eye is going to have nystagmus, and it's because it's trying to look towards the right side. So if I say now... Um, in MLF syndrome, there is always medial rectus palsy. Would that be a correct statement? Yes, it would be, because it's the medial rectus that is not moving.
that's the one. It's not that the medial rectus is damaged. It's not the cranial nerve 3 is damaged. It's, it's just that MLF is damaged. As a result, the overall medial rectus palsy is going to happen on the affected side. Okay, so there's going to be medial rectus palsy. Uh, what about convergence? Is the convergence going to be normal? Absolutely, because there is nothing wrong with the cranial nerve 3. It's going to work as it is um, because the cranial nerve 3 and all the, all the eye muscles which are handled by cranial nerve 3 is working fine. So convergence is going to be absolutely okay. It's just moving both eyes to the same direction would be a problem. In this case, since it's the right and left MLF that's being damaged, looking to the right with the left eye would be a problem. Okay, So make sure you are oriented, make sure you're talking about the same side, make sure you know that uh, the MLF which is coming from 6 to 3 of the left side is actually left MLF and not right MLF because it's going towards the cranial nerve 3. These are some of the important things to remember. And one more thing is that MLF is often seen in uh, patients with multiple sclerosis, um, but not necessarily. So it's very, very commonly seen, but it's very, 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 very commonly seen in multiple sclerosis. Anyways, hope this was helpful. Um, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye for now.